The Dr. Taz Show. The podcast, Dr. Taz. Superwoman Wellness. Here's Dr. Taz. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Superwoman Wellness, where you know that I am determined to bring you back to your superpower self. Joining me today on a topic near and dear to my heart is Dr. Lori Watley. We are going to talk about digital device usage and its effects. And boy, can I go off on this one, but let me tell you about Dr. Watley. She's a clinical psychologist who specializes in the effects of digital device usage on both individuals and businesses. With over 25 years of experience, Dr. Watley has worked with thousands of clients, both domestic and international. Her client list spans to everyone from families to CEOs and high-level executives of multi-billion dollar companies, foreign diplomats, and professional athletes. As a thought leader in her field, she has been featured in Inc., Yahoo News, ESPN, Business Insider, plus many local and regional publications. Welcome to the show, Dr. Watley. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, we're thrilled to have you, and we'll dive into the topic in just a minute, but tell us a little bit about how you kind of came upon this topic of digital connectedness and how it affects our mental health and performance in your line of work. What kind of happened there? Well, it, it became very relevant in my private practice that I have there in Atlanta, it became very relevant. I noticed that more and more, um, it was coming into my office and my clients being tired or being anxious and, uh, or maybe having relational issues. And as we started peeling away the layers, trying to get to the why and understand, often digital devices were mentioned. And Hmm. I was getting my doctorate, so I decided to make that my um, doctoral dissertation and just fell in love with the the research around this was just so interesting to me because then it was quite new and I was just uncovering so many things and realized well I'm going to need to know this if I'm going to service my clients well and so then that turned into a book and many speaking opportunities so it's been it's been a real journey and that I really enjoyed. Wonderful. So I'm curious, how long ago was that? How long ago were you first sort of uncovering this research on digital devices? Yeah, I started noticing this um, in my practice, probably mm, in the last, you know, maybe eight years ago, I started noticing it more and more Mm. and um, was starting my doctoral project then and found that there was research on it but there, I felt like there needed to be more. And right. it, it is changes, the data changes as quickly as the technology changes. So um, it, it just, you know, has been something that has, I, I followed that path of curiosity. Wow. And so were there patterns that you were seeing? And, and it talks about how you worked with CEOs and with, you know, diplomats and then families and were there just common, what are the common themes or patterns that you were seeing when it came to using digital devices and people's overall health and well-being and relationships and things like that? What, what, were there maybe like three common patterns that you were seeing over and over again? I think so, yes. Um, one pattern that was really interesting, uh, it even has a little tag name called fubbing. I don't know if you've ever heard of mm-hmm. that, no. but I did not. And, and people find that so interesting. Um, if you're out with your partner and maybe for a date night and they are on their phone a lot, we call that not snubbing, but fubbing, P-H-U-B-B-I-N-G. Oh, fubbing, got it. Relevant. Uh, many huh. people you know, the other person, the other thing in the relationship became the device, not not another person, but, you know, they're always on their phone or they're always on their laptop. So that was very relevant. Also, I noticed that the thing that brings people to me most often is anxiety. Mm. And I noticed um, that much of this anxiety can, can be due to lack of sleep. And many times I found out that people were not using their devices properly, which caused them to lose sleep. Hmm. And so what were they doing? Were they using them throughout the night or were they checking them before bedtime? I know that's something that I'll see in practice all the time where I've had patients tell me that 
you know, they'll have the device next to them, which is one thing, but they'll wake up in the middle of the night, they'll go on their phone for a period of time and then put the phone back down and try to fall back asleep. And I'm like, I don't know how you guys do that because I'd be wired after that. So it is exactly what happens. It, it, um, it, you know, it interrupts our sleep stages and we do become wired. Yeah. Uh, you can imagine if you open up, you can't sleep at night, you reach for your phone, you look at a text or an email that is not a positive one. Well, there goes the rest of your night's sleep. So that's one way. If we look at screens for um, an hour before bedtime, that interrupts our sleep stages. And our, you know, so if we look at that from a brain health aspect, um, it's best not to look at screens for an hour before bedtime. And then with teenagers, um, maybe their parents brought them in because their grades were dropping and they were cranky. Mm -hmm. And we, we came to find out that maybe they were up all night on their, on their phones and their parents didn't even realize that. Right. And so they weren't, you know, sleeping at night and then trying to get through the next day at school, mm. which was a task. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what happens to our device, like to our brains when we're on these devices a lot, what do you think is happening and uh, why is it triggering anxiety? Is there any science on that? What does the research say about that? Um, because I feel like people are really resistant to this idea. You know, you talk to parents about it and they're really resistant to, to monitoring devices in older kids. I think everyone's pretty good about the young ones, but in the older children, there's a lot of resistance about monitoring it. When it comes to even us, I'm just as guilty as often being distracted and trying to take care of one more thing on my phone or do one more thing before I do whatever else. And I've had to be very conscious about like trying to correct myself and I can only go on at these times, you know, that type of thing. So what, what is this doing to our brain? What are, what's all this what technology doing to us? Well, it does affect our brain. And um, as I said, the anxiety, mm -hmm. um, but also our focus. We know that it affects our focus. Hmm. And, um, you know, we can do a lot of this research ourselves on ourselves. If we are um, trying to focus on a conversation with someone and our phone is even sitting close by, that is a distraction for us. There's been many studies about this. Hmm. Um, students, let's say for instance, that were taking tests and they were allowed to have their phone on the right hand corner of their desk, turned down, took their test, it was graded. The next day they were given the same exact test and um, the phones were picked up right, right before the test. And just the anxiety from not having the security of their phone there, uh, most of them scored lower. Really? Lower. Yes. Huh. They, they've become kind of a security for us. I don't, you know, if you notice like people standing in line yep. at the coffee shop or something, yeah. instead of interacting, they're looking mindlessly at their yep. phone just yep. to keep from feeling uncomfortable being yeah. out in that space alone. So um, I always challenge people and say, it's a wonderful, you know, it's a wonderful um challenge to put your phone away, put it in your bag before you go into a coffee shop and make eye contact and right. talk to people and notice the difference that you feel when you're actually connected with someone else in that way. Very much. Well, what do you think right now is doing to all of us? You know, many of us, as we're talking right now are in a global lockdown with everyone kind of confined to their homes and highly dependent on technology. And Quite honestly, the patients that I have been talking to and seeing are so frustrated because trying to regulate any of us right now on technology seems like a moot point. What do you think is going to happen as we emerge out of this like national lockdown quarantine? Where, where do you think we're all headed? I think that's a really interesting question, and, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see. Um, what I'm recommending with my clients is that you know, technology is a wonderful thing and it is good for us right now to have balanced technology in our lives. I'm mm -hmm. recommending for everyone to try to connect in the way that you and I are connecting right. and, you know, to connect and see some other faces and have conversations and not completely isolate. That can be very bad for us. Um, but also I'm, I'm recommending as in all times with technology, to practice balance and 
um, you know, not just be on the computer the whole day or in front of a screen the whole day, but also take walks, play games that don't involve technology, mm -hmm. do a craft, um, you know, some hobby with your kids or your family or learn how to cook a new dish or, you know, just have balance, not, not all screens all day. Right. And then speak Speaking of balance, like what in your, you know, patients always ask me this question and clients always ask me like, what in your opinion is the right amount of technology for any of us? And then are there different rules for our children? You know, what should we be thinking about there? I think that it is um, oftentimes a very individual um, number, if you, if you will, um, depending on the person and depending on um, I think definitely we have to try and see what works for us. I do not believe in complete detox, no technology, because that raises our anxiety. And quite frankly, technology is a very real part of our world and essential. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So making friends with it and using it uh, as little as possible and seeing, okay, well, I'm going to check my emails this morning rather than all day long. And then I'll check them again tonight. And in between, I'm going to do non-screen activities and just see how that works for you and see if you notice that you sleep better and you focus better and you get projects done uh, easier during the day without so much screen. Got you. So would you say like sectioning off times of day where you're using technology or is it more hours per day? What's the best way to really know when it's too much? Right. I think, again, I think it's very individual because we are, are all uh, unique. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think that it, sectioning it off works very, very well for people. And, and also starting out with saying, okay, I'm going to run an errand. And I realize right now we can't do, run errands, but mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, but I'm going to leave my phone at home today while I go out for two hours, or I'm going to go for a walk. And, you know, when you go for a walk and I saw a man walk by today, walk by my home and he, he was texting, he was out for a walk and he was texting and his kids were with him. And I was thinking, wow, well, that really doesn't, <laughs> doesn't, the purpose. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. so, um, we're trying to connect in a different way yeah. and, um, have the benefits of that. So sometimes we have to completely leave the technology behind to do that. Yeah. Okay. And then you talk a little bit about a technology assessment. What, what's that about? Tell me a little bit about that. How do you do your own technology assessment? Well, I have um, an assessment. I actually have a website, um, drlauriewatley.com, and I have two assessments. That's mm -hmm. probably what you're referring to. I have mm -hmm. two assessments on there because one, I work with small businesses. Um, over $90 billion a year is, is lost um, in small businesses because employees are on their social media during work oh, wow. time. Mm -hmm. And so um, I work with small businesses to help them around that and other issues concerning um, digital device usage. And so um, I, I have an assessment for the small businesses to see if they need my help. And I also on that website have an assessment for individuals okay. and uh, both of these are free and you can take them and score them yourself and decide, well, yes, I think I need some help with this. You know, there are questions um, for individuals like, um, how is your sleep? Do you feel anxious during the day? What is your focus like? Are you able to put your phone in another room and feel okay with that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you need your phone with you when you're with someone at lunch? Um, how do you feel when you don't have your phone? Right. Gotcha. Well, and those assessments again, where can we find those? Uh, they are on my website, um, okay. drlauriewatley.com. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. All right. And then this is probably the most important. And again, I think I might be guilty, but um, how is our digital usage or phone usage affecting our personal relationships with our spouse, with our partners, with our children, with our coworkers? Tell, tell us, maybe give us some boundaries and some rules to use. <laughs> For these relationships so that you know it's it's not the third person in the room or the elephant in the room so to speak uh, when we're trying to establish meaningful relationships 
Right. And that was one of the concerns that led me to this research that I began and this, this life's work that I began. Um, I noticed that with couples, it screams almost always came up. Either mm. they, were, they were watching a football game on a date on their phone, or when they go to bed, they were, they brought their Kindle with them mm-hmm. or, or, um, you know, just, it seemed like it was really interfering with really good connection with the couples. Hmm. And so as I began to notice that that came up in couples sessions, um, I started recommending like tonight when you go to bed, let's try not to have the phone in the room, uh, put your phone in the kitchen to charge. And there was some real pushback. Wow. I don't know about, I need the phone close by. Yeah. I'm just so used to it. And, yeah. and you know, the more pushback, typically, probably the more we need to disconnect. Wow. Um, also, well, um, don't, don't bring your Kindle to bed. Well, I really like to, to read at, in bed at night. But the other partner was like, I like to talk about the day. And, you know, she's never present because she's always, or he's never present because right. he's, you know, um, and so, um, studying how those were being used for disconnect rather than connection, um, was important. Mm. What a great point, because I think, especially right now when we're all sort of under a quarantine and lockdown, I think, uh, true meaningful relationships are when we establish connection, right. And when we're not distracted and it's so easy to get distracted. And I think that you know, for many people going through this phase right now, when they're stressed and worried about different things and fearful, we're even more distracted, even though we're more present, physically more present. So I think it's so hard in any situation, you know, to constantly remind yourself to focus on where you are at the moment, one foot in front of the other, and everything else will be okay. You know, it's just a matter of, of constantly reminding yourself of that. And I think that that attachment to our devices and being overly connected and then disconnected from our relationships is the recipe for anxiety. That's what I've seen for sure over and over again. Um, You have a book. Talk to us about your book and when it came out and a little bit about it. Tell me about that. And I think I have a copy. I actually brought it down with me, but of course I don't see it at the moment. But uh, tell us a little bit about your book. Oh, good. I actually have have a copy here. (laughs) Yes, there it is. The title is Connected and Engaged, and um, I, you know, I think I, I, I did so much writing when I was uh, getting my PsyD, and I really enjoyed it, and I missed it, Yeah. and I, I have all of this research, and, and they turned my um, dissertation into a book, uh, which is on Amazon, but it's about the effects of texting on the marital relationship, yeah. and it, my own sweet mother found the statistics, you know, it was very statistic. Right. And, and it was not as user friendly as I wanted it to be. So I decided to, to write one that was for everyone mm-hmm. and um, wrote this book and just enjoyed it so much. And I feel like it is such um, valuable information for our world. This is like when I travel, I notice everybody has a phone or everybody mm-hmm. has a screen. This is something that we all, right. uh, myself included, right. um, have issue with. So, yeah. um, and, and I'm, I'm not, you know, I, lo- I love technology. Uh, right. It can be our friend and it can make our lives richer. But we, if we just recognize how we're using it. Fantastic. And so what in the book, do you have the technology assessment and some of these uh, assessments in the book as well? I do not have the assessment in the book. Um, I, um, as a, I have a, a lot of questions and actionables at the end of each chapter. Wonderful. So in, in, a, in essence, I don't have it as an assessment, but all of it collectively does become quite a, a good yeah. assessment. That's awesome. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a valuable resource to so many of us. You know, before we leave you today, though, what would you tell our audience and folks listening, we've got a lot of super powered women out there who are busy and multitasking. We've got moms, we've got all kinds of folks that listen to the show and tune in weekly, you know, and they are on their devices, probably listening to the show as we speak. But anyhow, so what would you like, what advice would you give them? I think 
let's break it down into what would you do as a CEO or small business owner? in terms of technology and digital connectedness, what would you do as a mom? And then what would you do as a wife or a partner? What are like three, those taking those three categories, what are three changes we could all make today? Well, I think you would be surprised some of those categories can overlap. Yep, um, I'm sure. As, as a mom, I think, um, you know, when the kids get in the car, if you're driving carpool, when they get in the car at the end of the day, um, not having your phone uh, on or mm, being on wow. your phone, or just being there. And you mentioned it earlier, being present, right. being present for your children, looking in their eyes, teaching them how to have a meal and interact and have, um, have uh, eye contact and mm -hmm. learn how to socialize. Those are such, such important life lessons for our children. Um, as couples, I would, I would say the same thing. When you go on a date night, leave your device at home, make your, the person that you're with the, the absolute focus of your attention. Mm -hmm. That's an art. That's a lost art. For yeah. many of them. Yeah. I'm guilty of it myself. Mm -hmm. So of course, um, this has all been wonderful for me to, to learn as well. Um, and, and in small businesses and big businesses, CEOs, I have found that when we learn to balance our technology, and, and I talk about that a lot in my book, the ways to do that, we can actually uh, be more successful. Mm. And it's because um, we're able to uh, work longer days um, if we manage our technology right and do not burn out during the day on screens. Um, maybe learning to take a walk. Mm -hmm. um, if you have several, several screen activities for work for a couple of hours, then maybe take a walk around the block, get some fresh air. You will come back and you will be refreshed and your brain will be rested, your eyes will be rested, um, and you'll be able to focus more for the rest of the day. And so, um, again, balance balance yeah i think that's so tough i find that many of us that are on screens all day long are just drained by the yes. end of the day and almost need some sort of digital detox coming off of these screens and some of the things that i recommend i don't know if you do as well but like using those emf blockers on your computers or your phones because it's a little bit less light and then I'm such a technology idiot. My daughter actually showed me, she's like, mom, lower the brightness on the screen. And that it's too much yeah. light coming at you constantly. Yeah. And so that's another quick little hack. And then I think like you're saying, walk, being near water, being near nature, being in the sun, those are all things that are natural technology kind of buster, so to speak. And, and we've noticed at the practice, because we're doing a lot of virtual stuff right now because of you know um, COVID-19 and being in, in lockdown and all that other stuff that we're getting super drained because right. we thrive so much on connect, like I do at least, and one of my colleagues do, we thrive so much, thr so much on connection and being able to talk and have a conversation. And now we're doing everything virtually or most of it virtually. And we just feel really wiped like halfway through the day. And I think it's the screens and the draining energy of the screens. So I think yeah. in, in this new time too, where everything's virtual, like, you know, taking more frequent breaks, maybe getting outside even more, you know, and I've seen it in my own son at the end of these Zoom school days, he looks just... He has this look, I, I call it the tech look, where you just yeah. kind of look drained and, and inflamed and like exhausted and all those other things. So I think this is such an important topic. I've been talking about it for a while and hoping it would gain traction. I know the research is there and I know so many people, pediatricians, psychologists, counselors, mental health professionals, neurologists, we all are just increasingly worried about the effects of technology on our brains, on our relationships, and on overall inflammation as well. So thank you for taking the time to join us today. If anyone in the audience wants to connect with you, what's the best way for them to find you? Well, I would say probably the best way is through my website, and it has all of my, um, it has my email and my um, phone numbers there. So again, the drlaurywatley.com um, is probably the best way, yes. Wonderful. Well, thank you for taking time out today to educate us on this very important topic. The book, again, for everybody is Connected and Engaged, How to Manage Digital Distractions and Reconnect with the World Around You. 
And thank you all again for watching this episode of Superwomen Wellness. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to rate and review it and share it with your friends. Stay super powered and I will see you guys next time.